Hello and welcome back. Today we're we'll going to be fixing the most powerful strength build by Ashen One. All footage was recorded on New Game Plus outside of the Mog fight. Our weapon of choice, as mentioned, is the Marais Executioner's Sword plus 10. The unique skill on this bad boy, Eokade's Dancing Blade, is the foundation of this build. In our offhand, we have a Dragon Communion Seal plus 10, which we can use for dragging incantations, for mobbing, and extra support. As for the armor, we have the Mask of Confidence, giving us a boost to our arcane stat to help us min-max the stats. And then we have the Briar's set, not just for fashion souls, but also we can damage enemies by rolling into them. Next, let's have a look at our seriously beefy talismans. Millicent's Prosthesis and Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, these are stacking and boosting our attack power with successive hits. Millicent's Prosthesis is also giving us plus 5 to dex to help us min-max our stats, which we'll look at in a moment. We have the Shard of Alexander, which is boosting the power of our Eokade's Dancing Blade skill. And finally, the Godfrey Icon, which is also boosting our special skill thanks to it being chargeable. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, I have the Faith Not Tear giving us enough faith to cast Golden Vow before each fight. And we have the Thorny Crack Tear boosting our attack further with successive hits by stacking with Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. This is one of the first major problems with his build. He is using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength as buffs. And in doing so, he is wasting a Physic slot, and he is wasting points into Faith. Now, on the surface, well, this isn't really that big of a deal. However, he is losing a lot of damage. With my buffs that I am using, I have the Magic Sharding Crack Tier, the Blood Boil Aromatic, and the Uplifting Aromatic. And with those together, that's giving me just under 10% more damage. That's a lot, considering I basically changed nothing about this build. That's why min-maxing is really important, because you're leaving 10% damage on the table. Alrighty, let's have a look at our stat spread. I started with the hero class. We have Vigor at 60, Mind at 14, Endurance at 23, Strength at 54, this gives us 81 strength when two-handing the Marais Executioner Sword. Dexterity we don't actually touch, but we get 5 points from Millicent's Prosthesis. Intelligence we don't touch. Faith is at 15, this is boosted to 25 thanks to the Faith Not Tear in the Physic for Golden Vow. And finally, Arcane is at 47, being boosted to 50 thanks to the Mask of Confidence. Okay, so I have his build laid out in my build planner, just because there's some stuff that can and can't really see until it all comes together. He has 14 mind for whatever reason. It's not really explained why. He has 23 endurance for, I don't know. You have 18 endurance to medium roll. Where is the extra five coming from? Like, why do you have those extra five points? You could be investing it into different stats. I don't understand why he's doing 23 endurance. Same thing with the 14 mind, just why? You can put it in other stats to make your build stronger. It's not like Mariah's Executioner Sword uses that much FP or stamina. He has 54 strength because two-handing it will increase his strength to 80. However, the Eokide's Dancing Blade, the primary function of this weapon, because let's be honest, you're not using it as a regular weapon, does not account for that two-hand bonus. That's a big difference, right? So that's another point where you just lose a bunch of damage. And then getting fake to 15 and using a crystal tier. For buffs that ultimately are worse than buffs that don't require faith, I know some people have commented that it's because they're hard to farm. And then his armor. Briars is a good armor set for PvP because you can aim punch. In PvE, it is useless. And it doesn't reach 51 poise, so he's being staggered out of attacks. Now, Mariah's Executioner Sword does have Hyper Armor. The Hyper Armor is a little later in the animation, so you can still get staggered out at the beginning. However, his Talismans are on point. They are 100% optimal Talismans. Okay, so for my improved build, 60 Vigor, that is the Vigor Softcap. Base Mind, Mind's not needed in this build. Uh, we have 17 Endurance to Medium Roll and still get 51 Poise. Then we have 72 strength, which is nearing the strength soft cap. We have base dexterity, which is going to be boosted to 14 with Millicent's prosthesis to meet the weapon requirements of the Mariah's Executioner Sword. 
we have base intelligence and faith and then we have 47 arcane boosted to 50 with a mass of confidence as that is the elemental arcane soft cap and that is just the optimal split to once you hit 50 arcane you should start investing into strength for the weapons obviously we have the mariah's executioner sword its dps is quite good when you can get the ash of war off for armor we have the mask of confidence obviously to boost our arcane the altered melisium knight armor we have the spellblade gloves to boost our ash of war magic damage we have the crucible greaves then as well and that's gonna all in total get us to 51 poise for the talismans we have the rotten wing sword insignia the millicent's prosthesis and both of those are going to boost our consecutive attack damage and then we have the Shard of Alexander and the Godfrey Icon, which is going to boost specifically the Ash of War as it is a chargeful attack. And for the Great Rune, we have Verdon's Great Rune to boost our HP, FP, and Stamina. And for the Crystal Tier, we have the Thorny Crack Tier and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier to boost our damage even further. 